An uninhabitable hell for millions of people. That's what the planet is becoming due to the lack of action on climate change. That's according to a strongly worded United Nations report. It says in the past two decades, more than 7,000 major natural disasters have been recorded. And that figure has nearly doubled in the past 20 years. The increases are mostly attributed to floods and storms. The UN is accusing political and business leaders of willingly sowing the seeds of our own destruction and says industrial nations have failed miserably on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Researchers on the biggest mission to the North Pole have also released some of their findings. What they've documented is extensive, extensive amounts of sea ice melting away and they predict there will be ice-free Arctic summers within the next few decades. Let's bring in Dennis McLean, who's a spokesman for the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, who are behind this particular report today. He's joining us from uh, Geneva. Thanks for speaking to us. So uh, pretty, pretty grim reading, I would describe this report as. I mean, talk us through some of the data that you came up with and what stood out for you. Well, the first thing is to say that tomorrow is International Day for Disaster Risk Reduction. And what we are trying to highlight by publishing this report is the need to strengthen disaster risk governance so that governments, UN member states, put in place national strategies for managing risk, reducing disaster risk, with clear vision and competent uh, agencies to to put these strategies into effect because if we don't the the future looks very bleak indeed because over the last 20 years we've recorded over 3,000 more extreme weather events than happened in the previous 20 years and of course that's just not sustainable if it continues again for the next 20 years to double uh, it's simply um, the case that Member, UN member states, governments are not delivering on the commitments that they made five years ago when they adopted uh, framework agreements like the Paris Agreement on Climate and the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, which is designed to reduce disaster losses by 2030. But we do see now around the world that we are losing the battle to eradicate poverty and to bring down disaster losses. Right. So what then what is your message to governments on how they can better prepare uh, for the looming disasters, as you call them, because clearly in this report you are pointing the finger at governments. Yes, I mean, in the long term, what we need to do is to see uh, progress on reducing greenhouse gas emissions so that we avoid catastrophic climate change. At the moment, we're on track for a 3.2 degree rise in, in global temperatures compared to pre-industrial levels. At the moment, we're at, five, we're at one degree or more and we already see the impact of that in the, in the rise in extreme weather events. I mean, floods have more than doubled in the last 20 years. We've seen a huge increase in the number of storms, and we're only now beginning to understand the impact of extreme temperatures on wildfires, drought, and, and uh, heat waves. And interestingly, so these, yeah. These... yeah, apologies, but your own data is showing that Asia suffered the highest number of disasters over the past 20 years, and then followed by the Americas and, and then Africa. That's correct. Asia is the most disaster-prone part of the world and, of course, it's the most densely populated part of the world. And we can see also that Asia is also bearing the brunt uh, of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Asia also has done a very good job in some cases of reducing loss of life from disasters. I mean, I would cite the example of Bangladesh, where 50 years ago, one million people died in the cyclone of November 1970. And recently, we had another cyclone in Bangladesh of similar magnitude, and only 19 people died. The difference in those 50 years is that the government has taken action decisively. They've put in place a very effective cyclone preparedness program, which has significantly reduced the loss of life in the, in the affected coastal areas because they've got a very good early warning system. Uh, huge numbers of volunteers disseminating the warnings and the warnings lead to early, early action, people evacuating in good time. And that's a good model on which to base pandemic preparedness uh, and other uh, preparedness programs that need to be put in place to reduce the loss of life. Right. So and when you say that floods and, storms, to... uh, floods and storms have been the most frequent disasters over the past two decades. But looking ahead, the warning is that the worst problem is going to be heat waves. 
The worst, well, I don't think it'll be the worst problem, but it'll certainly be a very significant one because we'll get, we're going to get better at measuring it. Most of the data we have on heat waves and, and mortality related to heat waves comes from Western Europe and, and more sophisticated economies. But there is no doubt that many, many deaths from heat waves are going unrecorded around the world, and we need to improve our data collection to understand better the uh, the impact that this is having on the lives of ordinary people, especially in low and middle income countries. But there is no doubt the problem is getting worse. and. Uh, effective measures have to be put in place to reduce mortality and the other impacts we're seeing from heat waves, especially when it comes to food security. Dennis McLean, we thank you very much for speaking to us from Geneva. Thank you.